Well, hello, my friends. Al Furtado, the rebel turner, is here. But not with the turning this time. Actually, I am here with a total disaster. Now, I think I have a beginner's luck syndrome that happens with me quite a bit. As some of you know, I've done that table out there in an epoxy resin core, which worked out really well. All right, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Let me back up on this. Now, I've been busy, busy, Fatima and I, doing my redoing my salon tabletop and boy I was so proud look at these pictures I mean the thing was working out beautiful now I wish I had filmed this from the beginning because it, would, it was quite a project but me I never think of grabbing the camera I do halfway uh, true, but it's like, oh, okay, I'm already halfway true. I don't want to explain what I've done up to now. But now it's kind of at the end, and I'm going to explain what I've been doing. Well, I went out to a local lumber yard, and I picked up some of these one by two, oh, a quarter inch by two inch slats in clear pine. Clear. Well, that's as clear as you can get over here. They still have a few knots, but these knots, I actually like the character. I don't like something that's all clean and uniform. But anyway, I uh, did, I uh, cut the, this table was with a rounded corners. And even though I already had an epoxy top on it, which had worked out pretty well, but the veneer that was on this rounded part was so paper thin that just cleaning it up a little bit was showing the grain of the plywood that the table was fabricated from. So it's like, okay, if I redo this, I want to cut these angles. So for this project, I recut the angles and that worked out pretty well. Did the border, the miter cuts are not too bad either. Did the surrounding border and then started putting these laying out what I was going to do with the tabletop uh, how it was going to work uh, with what I already had and I decided okay I'm going to leave this quarter inch gap between each slat and all the way around and that worked out beautiful so comes the time to do the epoxy which was yesterday and I was all excited about it and I poured the center first and I noticed I had a little bit of a problem where the edge of the boat on the wood, especially over here, created a lot of fine air bubbles coming up that I could not eliminate. It's like, okay, that's not too good. Then I came back with a secondary pour filling it up higher and coming up over the whole tabletop spreading it and then working the heat gun and tapping it and getting the air bubbles now with that i had a few air bubbles that kept coming up and gave me these bubbles that you see here that is not good but it's not the end of the world I could pop them, sand them, I could fill them, and that would be it. But that's not the extent of the problem. Over here, you can see that I got a haze, which are the same air bubbles that were kept coming up, like bubbling and creating a haze over these boards. And I kept working this area with the 
air gun, the heat gun going back and forth and constantly bubbles popping up. So it's got actually low spots in between where things popped and it wasn't able to uh, level itself. That's not good. Still manageable. Not ideal, but manageable. Sand it. Give one last coat of a fine epoxy over the whole table and that would have uh, taken care of that. But as I'm heating it up over here and trying to work these air bubbles out, even though I kept seeing that it kept popping, but I worked my way over to this side of the table. And as I'm heating it, I'm seeing bubbles and, you know, I'm popping out the bubbles and going this way. And by the time I get here, the whole back is loaded with bubbles again. I'd hit it again, hit it again. And no matter what, bubbles just kept building up. This was the last section that I did, building up. And it's like, okay, this is not working. Uh, it's not eliminating the bubbles. They are starting to get trapped inside the resin. Well, I let that go and I had craters. I mean, like not craters, but volcanoes over here all over the place where the bubble got trapped up underneath and it just pushed up the boxy up to the top. I, when I say up to the top, I had like quarter inch raises all through here and plus those tiny bubbles, but more exaggerated on this area. And that's what you got here and this area over here. So these are all very fine bubbles. So this morning in desperation, like I don't know what to do. I'm at a point that I don't know what to do. I went with a painter's knife and I actually cut back all these raised up areas that were here, literally cut it up and started sanding it. Started sanding this with uh, 220 and it just wasn't going anywhere. It was just gunking up the sandpaper. So I went with 80 grit and I already passed this area a little bit to see where I stand. The way I was thinking is that if I made it all foggy throughout or up to this edge over here and clear from here and over, that would still work for me. But the problem is I got all these clears and hazy sections in between. So I don't know how far down I'm gonna be able to go to clear this up. My thinking what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna to have to go all the way down to the wood and leaving the epoxy just on these things, take care of any bubbles that are in between these first on these grooves, fill those up, and then one skinny layer over the whole top to see if I can get it to cover up the wood again. Now looking on YouTube and seeing what mistakes people make with epoxy, the only one I saw that makes sense, and that's what I was thinking it was, but I wasn't sure, is that the wood should have been sealed first. Even if it was just resin before the full pour, give it a coat of just a paint over on all the wood, let it sit, and then pour the epoxy because the wood being porous, it just kept... Uh, interacting with the resin and releasing air all the time from it, whether if it's the resin trying to pour itself in or whether if it was the actual wood releasing air pockets out of it. I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And that's what one person on YouTube who does river, uh, river tables uh, said that he had a problem with the edge of a particular table that he was doing. Uh, creating these kind of fine air bubbles was due to the wood not being treated. So we're at a mess. I mean, that's not the extent of it, but these I can deal with. I could deal with filling this. I could deal with uh, leveling this off and getting rid of this uh, ripple. But all of this is related to the fact that I did the pour 
and I could not eliminate the air. And when I got here with the heat gun to most likely eliminate this bubble, it was already uh, gelling up, so it created like a wave uh, effect. But like I said, I wish that was the extent of the trouble, the problems. The big problem became when I got to this side and I had all this in white bubbled up. So, yes, not everything I do works in my favor. In this case, I got a hell of a lot of work ahead of me to fix this and I will let you know, probably record what I do from this point on to fix this issue. See you in a bit.